All right, I just got something new here. This is a, well, this is a bag for a fly fishing rod. And there's a fly fishing rod inside of it. Here's the reel. This is the uh, Wakeman. It's a five, six weight. Uh, this is like the cheapest eight or nine foot uh, fly rod on Amazon. It's like, it was about $25 and the case alone is worth that much because uh, if you look them up, this is a, uh, yeah, there we go. Wakeman. Uh, doesn't have any specifications on it, but that's all right. Uh, came with some tapered leaders, a couple of flies, which those are actually pretty decent looking little flies. Better than what you'd get in most fly kits. Those might actually work around here. Uh, the fly line that came with it is uh, pretty cheap Chinese stuff. I uh, get this anywhere. It's uh, 15 yards. Uh, it's pretty thin. It's lighter than the other stuff I have, but that's alright. Uh, it's not tapered line. I would prefer tapered line. But that's okay. This, just to get started with, this is a good starter's kit. Uh, I think it's a 9 foot rod. It might just be an 8. Let me put it together and find out. Yeah, I think it's an 8 foot. My other rods are 8 feet, so I'm going to go measure this up against those and make sure. But there you go. Wakeman. $25 kit. I'm going to put it together and see how well it is. It feels pretty good. It's pretty light. Let's see. I don't know if you can see the flex in it. It feels pretty good. The rod's pretty nice. The reel, pretty much the same as the, the reel that's on my uh, Shakespeare kit. And uh, I'm actually I'm retiring my Shakespeare kit. I don't want to use it anymore. So I went ahead and got this, and I think this is really the equivalent of the Shakespeare kit. It's, it's really the same thing. But I'm going to get it rigged up. We're going to go test it out. Yeah, it's, it's, this is an 8-foot rod. All the other uh, cheap fly reel, rods I saw on Amazon, there were some for like $10, $15, $20. They were all 6-foot rods. So this is the cheapest 8-foot rod I could find. All right, so let me get the reel taken apart here. It's just easier to tie tie the fly line onto the reel when you take it apart, for me anyway. Uh, I'm sure the experts out there may or may not agree. It's funny, it's wrapped up in pipe cleaner because you can, pipe cleaner's really good material to make flies with if you're into tying your own. Now I don't have any uh, backing Actually, I take that back. I do have some backing. Let me go get that. All right, I got some cheap 30-pound uh, backing line, 50 meters, but I don't know if I want to put this whole thing on there. I don't know how much I should put on there, but uh, yeah, I'm going to get this on there. 50 meters of this, and there's only 15 meters of that, so I'm going to get this tied on. I'm just spooling it up on there. I'm trying to do it like a bait caster where it's evenly spread on there. You know, I probably got half of it on there. I'm going to say uh, 25 meters is fine. I don't know. That's just what I'm going to say. Alright, now something else I, I really, really like using that I suggest everybody try to 
get their hands on. These are uh, loop connectors. Orvis makes some that are pretty cheap. Uh, basically, it, it saves you from the hassle of trying to... It's got a heat shrink on here that slides. And it saves you the hassle of trying to connect two different pieces of line. So, like, I can put this end on the fly line and heat shrink it on there and it'll stick. It won't come loose. And then I'll put this end on the backing, tie it on like that. And then the same thing for the leader. I use these to attach my leaders to the fly line. I'm actually not going to use it to attach the the uh, backing to the fly line itself. I'm going to use it for the leader. But uh, it's all spooled up. It fit on there nicely. It's actually a... Uh, uh, there's a lot of space left on this reel. I kind of wish I had swapped out the line from my other reel because my other reel is a lot smaller and uh, use this line on that one. But uh, let me go ahead and get this. I'm going to attach the uh, the loop connector I've got. Just put the fly line in there. Give it a couple of inches. Actually, you know what? Just to be sure, I'm going to put it in there as far as I can all the way in. All right, let me get some slack there. Uh, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna go ahead and attach the uh, loop connector to the fly line, which is pretty simple. You just put the fly line inside there, like that. I'm not entirely sure how far it's supposed to go in. I'm gonna put it in as far as I can, which that seems to be about it. Uh, and then I'm going to slide the heat shrink up. Right there. And just very quickly, I'm going to apply heat to it with my lighter. And shrink it on there. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's on there. That is not coming off. It's a little bit black. I think I might have a... I only applied heat to the heat shrink itself, not to the line or anything, so that's that's pretty good. And then I can tie my uh, my leader on on this end. It's already looped. It's been heat, heat shrunk on there as well, and it's got the loop on it, so I can just tie whatever kind of knot I want from the leader onto here. And uh, I think I'm just gonna do a Palomar because that's just that's what I know. There we go. I got it untangled without any knots in it. It's a very tapered leader. This goes down really, really thin on this end. Uh, where I'd almost be afraid to hook a fish because that should that feels like it would snap. And then it goes from about the thickness of a 10 or 15 pound mono to the thickness of a hair. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let me go ahead and get this tied on. Where is my connector? Alright, now closer look at the bag, there's actually a little pocket here that I put my flies and other stuff that I need inside there. And uh, yeah, that's good to go. I'm actually, one of the reasons I wanted this is because the bags, I think the bag is big enough that I can carry a couple of rods and reels in there. And uh, yeah, although I don't think this is actually meant, now that I've got the fly reel in there, the reel is all the way down here. So I think this is actually meant for... A regular rod and reel combo with a spinning reel or a bait caster or something. So um, flies, not quite, because uh, the fly reel is all the way down here at the end. All right, I just wanted to do a quick comparison between the two. This is my old uh, Shakespeare 1094, which I think has been discontinued. Uh, they don't really make it anymore, or at least I can't find the exact same model anymore. Uh, this is the Wakeman 5.6. And, uh, I mean, there's some, a uh, lot of similarities, uh, but there's a lot of differences too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the uh, handle award to the uh, Wakeman. Uh, it's also got this uh, knob over here, which is, I guess, like a counterbalance to keep the balance going. 
uh, as far as the reel itself goes, this release here to get the spool off. Uh, Shakespeare's is easier to use. Flip it over. And this is where they're, they're really similar. Same style, same size. Uh, drags on the bottom here. The Shakespeare has a drag up on top. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd say the drag is about the same on both. It's almost non-existent. So uh, there's really no point in even using the drag on these. Uh, I mean, there's really not. Uh, the rods, pretty similar. Uh, both have uh, plastic caps with the metal reel seats on the end of the handle. Let's see what we get there. That says made in China. This one doesn't say anything. The uh, EVA foam grips are pretty similar. This one, this one uh, starts wide, goes narrow, gets wide, goes narrow, gets wide. This one. Starts wide, gets narrow, gets wide, goes narrow. There's no, they're about the same length and size, but uh, slightly different shape on it. But the uh, the rods themselves are pretty similar, other than the uh, Shakespeare having the hook rest right here, and the other one not having a hook rest at all. So, eyelets. Let's check out the eyelets real quick. Uh, I'm gonna, the first eyelet is pretty much a regular casting eyelet, uh, but I'm gonna give that, that award to the uh, uh, the Wakeman, because it's got a metal inlet on there. It's just a nicer looking eyelet. The uh, Shakespeare is kind of a lower end, uh, plastic, cheap eyelet. Uh, the other eyelets are all just wire, and they're pretty much identical. So, yeah. Uh, but the rods are pretty similar. The reels are pretty similar. So uh, it, it should be an equivalent to the Shakespeare, which is what I wanted. All right, I'm out here. Found this little creek here. The water's running that way pretty good. So I should be able to get, if I can't cast too far, the water should carry it out for, for me. And I think there's gonna be some fish hanging out in these, under the brush here. Actually, from where I'm standing, I can't get a real good cast, so I'm just gonna let the current carry it out and uh, drag it back like that. Oh, look, there's chasing it. I had like three fish just come up and look at it. That was interesting. I just need one to grab it. One of them did actually kind of swipe at it, but he didn't grab it. Oh, I got him. I think I got a little bass. He's in the brush though. <laughs> pick him up. I think it's a little bass actually, yeah. So, there we go. Little bitty bass. <laughs> On the fly, there you go, the uh, kit works. That's a good looking little bass, little quad. Right inside of the mouth, nicely done. There you go. So the, uh, the standard flies work for sure. <laughs> he was playing dead the whole time in my hand, but as soon as he hit the water, he took off. All right, well, there you go. He's, uh, not sure how much of it you saw there, but the, uh, the, uh, the flies that come with the kit do work. So I'm going to keep throwing it. See if I can get another one. There we go, that was a good cast. 
kind of hitting the uh, pillar behind me, but that cast out to the middle pretty well. Oh, got one. Sunfish. Fighting pretty hard, little little guy. There we go. This is what I was trying to do right here. I knew there'd be some bluegill hanging out up there. There we go. Hopefully that camera's recording. Whoa. tangled up and slimy there but good one